All right, so this video is designed to talk about uh, simplifying radicals, uh, specifically square roots, uh, because there are square roots when we do the Pythagorean theorem, and sometimes you can't have a decimal. Like the instructions will say, leave in simplest radical form, something like that, meaning that we can't just type it into a calculator and figure out what it is. So what, it's something like this. So if I have, again, the square root, we'll say, of 27. Okay. Now, even though it's not written, there's an invisible 2 on the outside. That's why we call it a square root, kind of like when we say 3 squared, right? We put a little 2 above it. So that's what that means. So a square root is the opposite of a square. Okay. So, uh, so the square root of 27. Uh, the way that it, the easiest kind of way to explain it is by factoring out, uh, by basically dividing this number multiple times until all the factors I have left are prime numbers. Okay, so like 27, I can split up into 9 and to 3, right? Because 9 times 3 is 27, and then 3 is done because that is a prime number. I can't factor that any further because the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3. Right, and if I kept going, it would just be one and three and one and three. So we do, we don't keep factoring because all the pri a prime number means the only factors are one and itself. So once I get to a prime number, I can stop. Okay, but let's keep going here. Well, I can split up nine into three and three, and again, as we know, those are prime numbers. So now I'm done. All right, so now I have left for prime numbers. Oop, one too many. So now that I have all the prime numbers there. The 2, the square on the outside, I put it there myself, typically won't be written there. Okay, what that means is I need to find a pair of factors that are the same in order to pull them out of the radical. Or here's the example I like to say, okay? Pretend like the radical is a jail, and I need two people to get out of jail. But unfortunately, it's a tough escape, and only one person can get out, and all the rest must be sacrificed. I know it's kind of sad, but it kind of helps explain the point. So I have a pair of threes here. That means one of those threes can get out, but unfortunately one can't. So I, it just stays in jail. Sorry, you have to be sacrificed. And then this three right here tried to be part of the escape plan, but it didn't have a buddy to get out, so it stays locked inside. And so that means radical 27 can be reduced to three radical three, and that would be the answer. Okay. Now, obviously, you can plug that into a calculator. I'm just making a guess. I think it's going to be like 5.2 or 5.18, something like that. And you can have a decimal. But the whole point of what we're doing here is that we're trying to leave it in radical form, meaning we can simplify the radical to smaller numbers, but still leave it in radical form. Okay, So that's what we're doing here. And again, we're only using square roots, so we only need to find pairs to pull out and factor out. Okay, So... Uh, here's a couple of examples I've pulled up here. So let's start at the bottom with 18, because 216 is kind of a big number. Okay, so with 18, uh, again, any factor. So 6 and 3 come to mind, but you can do 2 and 9. Why not? Okay, so if I do 2 and 9, I can break 9 down to 3 and 3. And now all my factors are prime. Excellent. Okay, I have a pair of 3s here, so that means I can pull one of them out, and the other one's sacrificed. And this 2 doesn't have any pairs, so it stays inside the radical. And just to kind of explain my point, you can, like I said, 6 and 3, 2 and 9. Let me go ahead and show you if I did it with 6 and 3. So we're still going to get the same answer, but I just wanted to kind of show you a 6 and 3. All right, so I just break this into 6 and 3, and the 6 can be broken down to 2 and 3, right? So I still have a pair of 3s right here. One of them comes out, the other sacrifice, and I still have two that doesn't have a buddy to get pulled out. So, again, radical 18 is simplified to 3 radical 2. Okay? All right, 216. All right, this is a bigger number, but we can handle it. Okay, you're like, oh, I don't know. Okay, let's take a look at this. Well, there's two different ways here. I know it's even because 216 is an even number, so I know two, we can break it down on the two. But here's a trick that I like to teach people to see if a number is divisible by 3. Okay, so what we do is we add the digits of the number we have, so 216. So we do 2 plus 1, which is 3, 3 plus 6, which is 9. 
if the number that all those digits add up to is divisible by 3, then that means 3 goes into it. So 2 plus 1 plus 6 is 9, and 3 does go into 9, so let's try 3. Okay? So 3 goes in there, I believe, 72 times. I think I'm right. I know I'm right, in fact. Sorry, something on my screen. Okay. Uh, so 3 goes in the 7, 3 times 72 is 216. 3 is prime. I'm done. I can split the 72. Uh, the number that comes to mind is 12 and 6. Okay. Uh, 9 and 8 also would have worked. Again, either way is fine. 6 breaks down into 3 and 2. And those are both prime. I'm done there. 12 breaks down into 3 and 4, and 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. Okay? So, again, the goal is you want to get to all prime numbers at the end of every tree branch. Okay? So, let's go ahead and look here. I have a pair of threes. So, one of them gets out. The other one's sacrificed. Okay? Uh, I have a pair of twos. So, a two comes out. One is sacrificed. And then I have a 2 and a 3 that don't have a buddy, so I put the, those don't get out of jail. I have to leave them on the inside. Okay? So that's what I have so far. Now you just multiply the parts that go together. So on the outside, 3 times 2 is 6. On the inside, 2 times 3 is 6. So radical 216 reduces to 6 radical 6. All right, 144. Okay? Now some of you are saying, well, wait, Mr. Schwann, I know what this is. But let's say you didn't even notice. Let's say you're like, I don't, I don't know what this is. So let's go ahead and break it down here. So 144, like I said, I know it's even, but I also know it's divisible by 3 because 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9. So I know 3 goes into both of those. Awesome. Okay. So 144 divided by 3, if I'm doing my math right, it would be 4, 8, 48. Okay. Uh, so 3 is prime. I'm done there. I could break down 48 into 6 and 8. 6 breaks down into 3 and 2. 8 breaks down into 2 and 4. And 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. Right? So that's what 144 breaks down into. And I know some of you are like, well, Mr. Schwann, Mr. Schwann, I know that's something. Again, you're going to see here in a second. All right. So I have a pair of 3s. One of them gets out. The other one's sacrificed. I have a pair of twos. One of them gets out, one of them sacrificed, and another pair of twos. One of them gets out, the other one sacrificed. Now hold on a second. Notice how I have nothing left, right? Like I don't have any leftovers like I did for 216. Like every number was used, okay? If this ever happens, you should go back to the beginning and say, huh, is this number 144 a perfect square? Because if every single number is able to get out of jail, that means that number is a perfect square. Because 3 times 2 times 2 is 12. Oh, yes, I remember the square root of 144 is 12. Okay? So, that's how you, again, you could still do this method even if it is a perfect square. It just takes, obviously, a little bit longer, but you can totally do it. Okay? Uh, and so, 175, again, uh, I want to see what you do there. Um, just kind of give you, leave a little mystery. If I were to help you start, I know 5 goes into it. Okay? And again, if I were to help you with more, I think 30, no, 30, 35, yes, 35. So 5 and 35, I'll start you off there, but again, you're on your own from there. Good luck. All right, so the whole goal of why we're doing this is because we can solve Pythagorean theorem, but rather than giving me a decimal, I can leave it in radical form, okay? So, of course, we remember that the uh, right angle points to the hypotenuse, so 15 is C, and the two legs are A and B. I'll just call that A and this B, okay? So we know in Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A squared, in my problem as I label it, is going to be 13 squared plus B squared, which we don't know, and C squared is 15 squared, Okay? So, in order to get b squared by itself, we have to, uh, well, let's, let's find out what all these numbers are. 13 squared is 169 plus b squared. 15 squared is 225. Okay. Uh, 169 and 225 are like terms, different sides. So, we subtract 169 from both sides. And b squared, 
equals, if I'm doing a little margin math here, 15, that's going to be 6, borrow, that's going to be 5, 56? Yes, 56. Okay? So, b squared equals 56, and in order to get rid of a square, we have to take the square root of both sides, and so this is where our knowledge of simplifying square roots comes in. So, the square root of b squared is b, and now we have to break down 56. Okay, well, I know 8 and 7 go there. 7's prime. Okay, 8 goes down to 4 and 2, and 4 goes down to 2 and 2. All right, I have a pair of 2's here, so I can pull one of those out. And the 2 and the 7 didn't have a buddy, so they stay on the inside. So 2 times 7 stay on the inside. All right, so a 2 definitely on the outside, but 2 times 7 on the inside gives me 14. So B, or X, in this triangle is 2 radical 14. Okay? All right, and so, you, again, if, you, if I went a little fast for you, you can stop the video, go back. But I'm going to do one more example of Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So, again, the right angle always points to the hypotenuse. So that's C. And, again, I'll say this is B and this is A. Why not? Okay? We know Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared, which is 8, equals c squared, which is 16. All right, so a squared plus 64 equals 256. All right, combine like terms. 64 and 256 are like terms, different sides, so we have to do inverse. Okay. So a squared equals 2, got to borrow 9, 92, 192, okay. And then, if we don't want a squared, we want just a, so we take the square root of both sides, and a equals, okay, break down 192, here we go. Well, I know that's even, and remember my trick with 3s, 1 plus 9 is 10 plus 2. 2 is 12. 12 is divisible by 3, so that means we can plug that in. So let's see, that's going to be 6, 64, okay? And I know 64 breaks down into 8 and 8, okay? Now here's a special rule. So if I have uh, two factors already that have a pair, I could stop right there, meaning I can use 8 and 8 right now. So I know 8 comes on the outside, and then I have 3 that's left all by itself. So radical 3. So A would be 8 radical 3. All right? So there are your examples of how we simplify radicals, especially helpful for doing Pythagorean theorem. We don't want to make a decimal. We just want to leave it as a, uh, the simplest radical we can. So there's your explanation, and there you go.